year 1987, at the John F. Kennedy Space Center, NASA launched the last of America's deep space probes. Aboard this compact starship, a lone astronaut, Captain William Buck Rogers, was to experience cosmic forces beyond all comprehension, an awesome rush with death. In the wink of an eye, his life support systems were frozen by temperatures beyond imagination. Ranger 3 was blown out of its planned trajectory into an orbit a thousand times more vast. An orbit which was to return the ship full circle to its point of origin, its mother Earth, not in five months, but in 500 years. It took me four false starts before I understood how to successfully play Buck Rogers. I died horrifically stupid deaths. That never would have happened had I only read the manual. But the manual is Bible thick and... Yeah, not today words. Instead, I chose to fumble through alien mechanics. And eventually, through much trial and error, found that despite all appearances, Buck Rogers' Countdown to Doomsday is an engaging tactical RPG with a rich narrative. Upon cursory inspection, I assumed, correctly, that Buck Rogers was a PC port, because it's an EA Genesis game, and for the most part, that's what EA published back then. Well, that sports ball. I didn't realize, however, that Countdown to Doomsday was an adaptation of an old TSR pen and paper RPG which was itself an adaptation of a TV show based on a modern mythology originating in the 1920s. I had my suspicions, however. Once I saw the character stat screen with its AC ratings and tobacco score, for those not in the know, TSR was the original publisher for Dungeons & Dragons, before being bought out by Wizards of the Coast. And Buck Rogers, the tabletop game, was designed using the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition rule set. So, while I'm not much of a D&D gamer, admittedly, much less space D&D, I do love me some original Baldur's Gate, which also just so happens to share the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition rule set. Long story short, Buck Rogers' the Sega game felt comfortably familiar as someone other than the titular Buck Rogers. What? Something wrong with your fucking Wagnalls. You and your crew of rookie space operatives undergo a series of tactical missions for NEO. That stands for the New Earth Organization, a collective band of freedom fighters seeking to overthrow Martian occupation of Earth. Of course, when I say Martian, I don't mean like little green men. Although the game does have its fair share of non-human races, but genetically enhanced Russian-American Martians, otherwise referred to as Ram, who colonized the Red Planet and later grew into an aggressively militaristic imperial superpower. The Buck Rogers universe is basically Star Wars, minus the space wizards, and Ram, like the Empire, seeks a doomsday device with which to obliterate Earth, Alderaan style. The game begins in chaos. Shit's exploding and people are dying as your team blindly runs into Ram's execution squads. It's time to sink or swim as the player is forced to familiarize themselves with the combat mechanics and field test whether or not they rolled a viable party. Pro tip, you'll need medics. At least two. There are no healing herbs or resurrection potions in Buck Rogers. If a character dies in battle, they stay dead until revived by a medic or taken to a med bay, but, you know, good luck finding one. Hit points are partially restored after combat encounters, but again, only if you have a living medic handy. A party with no medics will eventually wear themselves down to extinction, and once the adventure begins, you're locked into your chosen party roster. So recruit accordingly, and save between successful encounters. Buck Rogers isn't much to look at. It's abstract in a way that modern games aren't. The dungeon maps are sparse, isometric floor plans with zero decor save the occasional computer station. We are given just enough visual data to suggest the vaguest concept of your surroundings. At a glance, you'll be assured that, yes, your party is exploring that, that, 
whatever that is. And whoops, there's a monster. Every location is equally and appropriately, or inappropriately, desolate. Whether you're trudging through an abandoned space station or a bustling city, the atmosphere and details are communicated strictly through text. For players used to games being a visual medium, this is a hard sell. I know. But for the imaginative, the readers, Buck Rogers has a lot to offer. Your first real mission sends you off to recover an abandoned ship, but as your crew enters, things go tits up. To absolutely no one's surprise. It's an extremely tense mission, as one by one your crew succumbs to a mysterious illness. Mechanically, you're just walking around fighting big ugly monsters, but it's the scattered ship logs and event descriptions that provide not only the backstory to just what happened here, but also an intangible feeling of oppressive discomfort and dread. Before the age of photorealism in video games, text flavoring was just how things were done. Especially if the developer wanted to really flesh out some grisly details. Similarly, I remember playing Fallout 2 as a teen, and noticing that down in the combat description box, a narrative spilling out about how my character had stepped in radioactive sludge and grew an extra toe. It wasn't information that was crucial to the adventure, nor could it have been represented in teeny tiny pixelated detail. But the unease I felt reading it stuck with me. I relived that moment playing Buck Rogers. RPGs are more than story-driven games, they're storytelling games. A DM or a computer plays the part of the narrator. So when Buck Rogers describes the audio discs floating in zero gravity around the trash dormitory, that's the DM setting the stage for action. But a real RPG isn't complete without the player response the player's choice. It's the players who provide the substance of the adventure. Buck Rogers allows players some freedom in choosing the manner in which quests are solved. Every encounter need not end in bloodshed should the party happen to include a character who meets the ordained stat requirement. And sometimes it's possible to talk your way out of combat entirely. This might just be my favorite aspect of the game. I love the feeling that my choices matter, even if ultimately all forked roads lead to the same finale. As much as I enjoyed Buck Rogers' dedication to delivering an authentic pen and paper experience, it was not without its quirks. For one, map navigation is alien and unintuitive. You don't directly control your guy as much as you input a directional command and he steps a single block in that direction. It's not bad, it's just different and... Personally, it took me a lot longer than I feel comfortable admitting before I finally stopped ramming my little dude into walls and dead ends. Again, I don't offer this information as criticism as much as a warning. I know how tempting it is to drop a game like a redshirt Trekkie if your first impression is just pure confusion. And then there's the grenades, which are awesome. They make things explode. Except you can't re-equip gear mid-battle, so before you even trigger an encounter, you have to decide whether your character should carry a weapon or an explosive. And then you can't even switch explosive types, so maybe you want to start the battle off with fog grenades to obscure visibility? Which is great, except after that first throw, your character has literally nothing else to do the entire encounter except skip his turn and bear witness to the slaughter. And that sucks. My final gripe is with skill gains. After acquiring a thousand XP or so, you can visit a training facility to level up your dudes. And some skills are super important. Zero gravity maneuvering, while others are totally pointless, such as library search. The only place I found that even allowed a library check was the, well, the library. And the reward was a bit more XP. I essentially traded thousands of experience for like, 200. That's a shit trade game. A shit trade. Anyway, only your warrior characters can train in weapon specialization, even though every character participates in battle. You don't notice much of a difference at the start of the adventure when everyone sucks equally. But as your characters advance, the disparity becomes really apparent, and sure, your warriors become badass MVPs, but everyone else is still lawful. Okay. Maybe giving them all grenades isn't such an inconvenience after all. In the end, rocket launchers are the true equalizer. 
When your party is in delving dungeons, they're sailing around space and blowing up baddies. Random ship battles are a thing. They're never very challenging, or perhaps I've never found them to be because I've always made sure to include a very capable space jockey on my team roster. My tactic is to aim for my opponent's engines and hull, shortly leaving behind a blackened, withered husk adrift in the void. After all, that's what Ram lackeys get for being evil bellends. Speaking of bellends... Oh! Oh! Your helmet is so big! Lord Helmet, what?! Actually, I don't have a tie into that. But I do want to discuss the combat. Regular battles are handled tactical style. I don't know what it is about the Genesis, but like half the RPGs for the system use combat grids. I don't know. That's just weird. But a good weird, because I love moving my dudes around a three-dimensional space. I appreciate how combat can be as straightforward or as complicated as you're willing to make it. Personally, I tend to rush into open fire and call it a day. I also die a lot. Hmm. But a careful player willing to exploit the grenade system can establish a proper defense to the point of blocking enemy explosions entirely. Which is extremely useful in late game encounters when apparently rocket launchers become standard issue armaments for ram soldiers. All in all, Buck Rogers is a decent tabletop style roleplaying experience. It may lack visual appeal, but for those who appreciate tactical battles and lots and lots of reading, it's one of the better RPGs available on the Genesis. And that's not even a backhanded compliment. Really, I just love Genesis RPGs. Particularly this one. <laughs>